Hello everyone, welcome to another video with Cass on the Mismo channel. So last week, DocCam together with Methods uh, threw down a challenge to make a airlock piston door. The idea is to have a piston door that works underwater and lets you transition directly from the ocean into your base without flooding everything in the process. I actually came up with two different designs for the challenge. Uh, because I was having so much fun playing around with this concept. But I wasn't able to do those in 1.13 because my game was crashing from the snapshots for reasons I don't really understand. So hopefully this works in 1.13 and if not, I'm sure I can come up with a fix. The idea for the first design is to be extremely simple. So you would be coming from the ocean. Uh, and then you can you need to have a redstone torch and you need to place the redstone torch right here and then the door will open you walk in and in a few minutes this happens so basically the dispensers will drain all the water and then after that the the glass door will open leaving you with a dry chamber on the other side uh, yeah they wanted a very compact design, so I believe this is really compact, especially considering that it has the, the little uh, redstone key detection. And the input to the other side is also built in. Of course, you can change where it is, but for now it's here at the top, so you can just click the button, get inside the chamber, and it will flood with you inside, and this time you have to move. You have to move fast enough so that you don't get crushed by uh, the, the solid blocks on the other side. So let's uh, check this out one more time. So basically this is how this works. When one door closes, the other one opens and in sync with everything, we also drain the water. So it doesn't follow 100% of the specifications. Uh, and this is basically because I got carried away and I wanted to do some thinking out of the box and come up with new ideas. And now I'm going to press this button from the outside so that you can see how the chamber looks uh, when you are not inside it. So yeah, that's what I said. When one door opens, the other one closes and this is a very simplistic design. No redstone underneath. We have some light sources in here. I also like to include those whenever possible. Uh, the layout is very symmetrical with the dispensers and everything. Um, yeah, and this is how this works. <laughs> the second design is a lot fancier, so let's dive in once again. And the first thing you will notice is how we don't have the outline for the door. So I tried to make a flush version of the door. Uh, that is possibly easier to hide. Um, so you place your redstone torch on top of this magma block and then the door opens and then you cross to the other side. And as you can see here in this version, I didn't even include the glass because I'm using this trick here where I create a gap on the floor, uh, which gives the water a path to go to so that it doesn't flood your base. And this is what I hope didn't change in 1.13. Hopefully it didn't, but I, I believe there is still a way, even, even if it did. And after a while, the door will close automatically. As you saw, this is the opposite side. You can see some of the redstone uh, down here. Uh, the door itself is the science circuit, uh, excluding this block, maybe. <laughs> and the red circuit is what triggers it again, but also does something that I'm about to show you. So it includes the detection key for the redstone torch uh, within this layout. Uh, and if you press this button in a very, very convenient place as well, you can see the, the water wall here and you can just jump in and dive. But as you could see, uh, this so sand block was a magma block before. So the idea here is that once you get out of your base, the so sand block will act as a elevator uh, with the bubbles in 1.13. So you can just position yourself around here and it will help you up. Uh, if you're going to the surface and uh, after a while that is totally comfortable uh, with this hopper thingy here you, all you need to do is to add more items to this if you need more time to get to the surface again this will change back into a magma block which means that it will also have help you on your way down so it will pull you down here you have to be careful not to take damage from this thing i don't know if you can take damage from this thing underwater but anyways uh, and then 
you can go through your process again and <laughs> yeah just just thought I could come up with something different uh, for you guys and uh, yeah this is how this works a pretty cool door uh, those are the two designs I'm not going to do a tutorial for those um, but there are two little really little things that I would like to comment about let's let's just see the the block swapper in action once again before we move on maybe so yeah changes into soul sand becomes an elevator hopefully and then you can go on your merry way and uh, after you, pro you program your own specific time it will change back into a magma block and close the door automatically this is beautiful guys it's just beautiful before I end the video, there are two particular subsystems that I came up with specifically for that door back there. And those are quick to show and really worth it. So yeah, the first one is the detection key. So basically it would have a wall in front of you. And if you place a torch on the floor, uh, the, uh, a dropper, an, even, an, even an empty dropper will detect it. And uh, the observer can also detect the change in it and output a one tick pulse, which is one of the most useful kinds of pulses in the game. And if you remove the torch, it detects it again. In that case, I detect it underwater, so it also destroys the torch automatically for me. Uh, maybe I could even do something like this. Let, let me try this. I'm just coming up with this on the fly. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't detect that the torch is not there anymore. Maybe it would need uh, two ticks delay, something like that. <laughs> really, really coming up with, with this right now, guys. So, uh, let's see. Okay, it gives out two pulses, but it gets rid of the torch. And the second one is the block swapper. So, it's a really simple one. So, now we have a sea lantern on the floor. And now we have glass. It works with uh, solid blocks or... Uh, transparent blocks and it has only two layers below the floor uh, which is really cool and this is the layout i think that if you guys pause the video you can probably uh you're probably going to be able to uh, to copy this circuit by yourselves uh it also works with a four tick pulse so if you give this a four tick pulse or even a three tick pulse it will switch blocks uh, it goes only two layers uh, below the floor, but it extends one block out of this little cube here. So if you want to change this, you could also add uh, one block here uh, with redstone dust. And then you can get rid of this piston. So now it has three layers underneath the floor. Uh, when you click it, it works the same, guys. So now we have the sea lantern and now we have the floor again. So. Yeah, those are two little sub-circuits that I use in there. Uh, and if you guys are interested, just let me know. I can provide this as a map download to you guys in the video description. Anyways, don't forget to check the video description if you want to watch Doc and Methods video. And yeah, if you want to participate in the challenge, good luck for you guys. I hope you had lots of fun, just like I had. And I hope to see you soon watching my videos again, guys. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.